no story, no guts, no glory, says Sahoda. And here's the tail of the tape for this one. It's the main event here on Cage Seal 34. It's for the pro bantamweight title, both men 30. Both men looking for a big win. It's one MMA taking on Manchester top team. 10 centimeter height advantage for Sahoda. This one brought to you by Fight Scout. Ladies and gentlemen, the following fight is sponsored by Fight Scout and is a professional bout of MMA held in the bantamweight division. Fought over three five minute rounds and is for the Cage Steel British bantamweight title. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your main event of the evening. So for the thousands in attendance and those watching around the world, are you ready? It's showtime! Introducing first into the blue corner, this fighter is 30 years of age, stands 5 feet 7 inches tall, hailing from Manchester via Holyhead. He fights out of 1MMA Academy with a record of 5 wins, 1 loss. In the blue corner, James The Truth Williams! And across the cage in the red corner, this fighter is 30 years of age, stands 5 feet 11 inches tall. Hailing from Huddersfield, he fights out of Manchester top team with a record of four wins, two losses. In the right corner, Pav Singh Sahota! So with the official introductions there from Gary Patterson, this is the main event. And a smile of confidence there from James The Truth Williams. Lee Fallon given the final words. The blue corner for Williams, the red corner for Sahota. This is a fight that we'd said from the beginning, Dean, nearly sells itself. Your views on the strategy. Now, well, this is going to be a striking feast for the fans. Two knockout artists with four ounce glove. gloves. What's not to like? I think the key is going to be the thread of the takedowns to open up the strikes. See already, Zahota using a little bit of uh, bravado as he eats a body kick. Well, Pam Zahota's had a host of quick wins and quick losses. We talked about the experience as well of Jordan the Truth Williams, who wanted no easy day in the office for this outing. Heavy kicks here. Open stance matchup. Rear kick on display from Williams. Sahota blocks. Forward pressure here from Pad Sahota. Have Sahota walking into a right cross there from Williams. Oh, digging the left body shot. Beautiful work. Immediately gets out of danger. Looking for the left hook. Sahota. Sahota looking for combinations, but is eating that rear kick to the body. Oh, nice knee on the money there from Sahota. It doesn't seem like, he, yeah, he glanced off the elbows. You can see Williams there just pointing to his forearms. Oh, clean right hand there for Williams. Well, Williams has had a nearly perfect run. For just over the last two years, of course, Sohota coming into this one with two losses, looking to right that ship. Nice boxing combinations here from Sohota. Short left hand finds its mark. Williams staying very steady here in the pocket. Sohota showing lots of volume. See Williams is looking for the elbow close range when Sohota closes that distance. He's digging to the body as well to try and draw Sohota in. Some nice head work from Sohota, but he's got the hands down. We know that we, Williams got some dangerous kicks and dangerous knees as well. Body work here from Sahota. Pav Sahota on the front foot. Williams circling to the right. Heavy kick lands again to the body from Williams. That has been a great connection now three times in a row. Pav is talking to him. Single leg pickup here from Williams. Runs the pipe. Up goes Sahoda, down goes Sahoda. Williams got some tight grappling skills though as he looks to maneuver to the back. Got to stay low on the belt line though to negotiate those hooks in. 
Can Williams get that signature control and punishment that we have seen him break fighters down with methodically time and time again? This was one of my questions about this contest. Would there be a strength or perhaps a technique advantage in the clinch? And he's using that vine there in the back of the leg to try and negotiate his way round to the back. It prevents Sohoda from backstepping here. And when he takes the takedown, he exposes the back. Specifically because Sohoda doesn't have the unhook with the right arm. It's a triangle potential here, but I would imagine Williams is going to try and secure this top position as they get back to the feet. Yeah, it would have been a different game if it was submission-only grappling, right? And for sure. Our outside position here now for Sohoda the need to soften up. Kimura trap though from Williams. It's going to put a bump in the road for Sohoda to be able to finish this takedown and then stay in that top position. Oh, some nice elbows there from Williams. Travis Brown style with the elbows. Sohoda taking a couple of blows there to the side of the head. Those can be very, very damaging. Potential Kimura trap counter. Can Williams drop and get it? The answer is maybe. Sohoda actually hopping to his back to avoid the worst of that. A nice adjustment from Williams, though. He let go of that grip, forced the hips forward now to try and negotiate this top position. From here, he can start to lace the legs and drag Sohoda away from the cage to get the mount. Attempting to do just that with a figure four is James Williams. Half Sohoda, of course, very concentrated on using that cage to his own advantage. Sohoda does get up well against the cage, you know, coupled with this, his submission defense. You can see that he plants the hand down, he'll get the feet underneath him. He used the whizzer as well as an anchorage point to get back to his feet. You'd have to think training at Manchester top team with some of the people there, there would be no shortage of cage work. <laughs> yeah, it's an important aspect of the game. We're seeing that here now, but the, the response there from Williams is to vine the leg through on the left leg of Sohota, but Sohota gets to the, foot, the feet, eats a knee for his troubles, however. Williams proving to be a double threat there up against the fence. This one booked for three five-minute rounds. Sohota in the red corner. The Williams corner in the blue. Williams trying to establish the teeps here. Goes low on the knee, up to the head, and to the body. Doing a better job of keeping Sohota away from him. I think he's trying to draw Sohota onto a power shot so he can change levels. He's going to keep his back off the cage, however. Oh, huge overhand right left hook combination from Sohota. Sohota caught Williams circling into the power, collapsed and nearly with that right again. The right hand landing for Pav Sohota. Williams thought about threatening the takedown. Sohota really controlling the outside of the cage here with his boxing. Is Williams hurt? James Williams diving for a head inside single. Heavy sprawl here from Sohota. So Williams has got to walk forward and get the legs to the canvas. And that's what you see in the response there from Sohota. He's literally grabbing the ankle, preventing Williams from getting to his feet. And he's getting that sole of the feet on the canvas. There we go. He's got more power. He's got to address this underhook, though. Otherwise, he gives up the back. Surprising to see Sohota controlling that leg as opposed to digging for an underhook. Yeah, I mean, he's trying to disengage the power from Williams. If Williams can get to his feet, you'll see here, the second Williams can get to his feet and get the soles of the feet on the canvas, he's able to drive forward and, and chase the double leg and the single legs. He's looking to get the outside trip now, switching to the, uh, the double entanglement. Williams, got to, again, he's got to drive forward, and that's why Sohoda was making the effort to control the ankles of his opponent. Driving forward is Williams, and right on cue, he is able to collapse Sohoda as Sohoda scoots up to the fence. No shortage of cardio from either athlete here. Williams making this his fight as you predicted at this range, Dean. Yeah, he's got to be close here. Drag Sohota away from the cage. Again, look to lace the legs to get to that top position. There's some elbows being fired down from Sohota in this instance. Doesn't have the same power though, not being in the, on the feet. There's the lace from Williams. Now Williams got a body lock Sohota here and drag him away from the cage.
I feel like this round is past Sahota right now, though. I mean, he's done several noticeable flurries that affected Williams, right? Yeah, he's going to score. Yeah, he's stung him with some good shots. But the control is going to be the aspect here, the effective grappling and the control from this top position. Also, if Williams can mix in some nice ground and pound, that's going to give him the affordance to then walk up to the mount position because Sahoda's going to have to pull the hands up to defend. But he's got to slowly, methodically walk himself like he's kind of climbing a tree. He's got to walk past the hips. He's got to walk up nice past on the, the top of the belly here. This is a much better position for Williams. And of course, under the pro rule set, he can fire elbows from here. Can Williams mount some meaningful offense, though, from this position, right? That's the thing. Sahota's avoided that. That's my rationale on the scoring thus far. Williams certainly with a golden opportunity here if he can find his way into a ground and pound scenario. Well, he's got to do that. He's got to keep busy. The ref warning from the cage. Oh, nice kick off the cage. Reset for Sahota. Timely escape here from Pav Sahota. But Williams just all over him like a wet rag. Williams going to get the hips in again. Going to walk the hips in. Crush the pocket. If he wants to try and get some real estate here, that's nice work with a trip. But again, Sahota straight back to the feet. But I feel like Williams has done such a great job of always being at least a, a two-dimensional problem by either attacking the back or some of his forward pressure right up against the cage. His cage work has been great here. That's frustrated Sahota. And that was one of my key questions. Would he be able to find a technical or a physical advantage in these positions? I think from the back with the body lock, almost certainly. But we know Sahoda's really good at defense up against the cage. You know, we've seen him in his previous fights. He gets up really well from the bottom position. So when Williams gets that outside trip, when he gets that double leg, he's got to make sure he laces the legs to prevent them from going underneath and then back on the canvas. Sahoda was thinking about a ninja choke there. Did you see that? He was thinking about sneaking his left arm underneath the neck, but... Be difficult to secure though with his opponent more or less on his on his back. Now more affordable from this position than Ninja Cho. He was thinking about it again. Yeah, I mean it's the end of the round. Why not throw it in for good measure? There we go. Ten minutes. Shout out to Fight Scout once again. The Fight Scout app we are streaming exclusively on. And you can check them out on fightscout.app. We're back underway here. Outside position for Williams. He's looking like to try and draw a power shot from Sahota so he can change levels. Nice uppercut there, close range from Williams. Sahota, though, master of distance. I like the way he's changing levels to threaten the takedown and then come upstairs. So doing a good job of selling the fact here that he wants the takedown. They must think that Williams is tired. Sahota. Penetrating with that footwork, is able to get out on a double, couldn't get it, forces the back. What an interesting shift. You think an illusion? It could have been the game plan to tire him out, you know. Even the bravado between the rounds, he's trying to spare Williams on to make him fight with aggression, to keep coming forward. But in the grappling exchanges, Williams was consistently working, but you could argue the case that Sahota was working even harder to get back to his feet. But that could become evident here with the with the cardio of Sahoda. You can see he's not labored. He's pressing the action. Even coming into this round three, he was ready to go straight out of the gate. Nice connections here from Williams. Williams, short uppercut, finds its mark on Sahoda. Sahoda was buckled. Double leg takedown here for Pav Sahoda. Williams caught him two or three punches there. It's like the Kimura trap. A little bit of difficulty here for Sahoda, but he's maneuvering his way around to the back. If he can connect the hands and pull Williams away from the cage, can then circle off to the right-hand side for the takedown. The key here being to try to connect your own hands to avoid that, right? Well, Sahoda's got to connect the hands here to get the takedown, and Williams doing a good job of disengaging the hands now. Looking for the head snap straight in on the single. Beautiful wrestling from Williams. Now the key becomes where he has to get that left arm towards the sky and underneath the underhook. That's good work from Williams though to command that underhook. This is the key for him to maintain this top position. So just got to get back to the feet in this instance. More difficult in the center of the cage. So this plays into the hands really of Williams.
up to his knees here is Sahoda. Back exposure from Williams. Granby roll attempt here from Sahoda. Unable to do it. Williams getting both hooks in. It was a compelling change that Pav Sahoda was happy to press the takedown here in the third round. I could see, you know, both camps acknowledging, okay, there's one round yet to go, and this one round might be the deciding factor here. Maybe they thought Williams was tired. Yeah, but it, so it definitely looked to press the action to get the takedown. Williams in the back control here. Got to try and square his hips, though, to Sahoda's. Otherwise, he risks being shaken off. It's nice work from Sahoda. He's got to separate, though, get that head to the sky and utilize the ground and pound. Well, there has not been a great deal between this pair in this round. Bar two or three punches landed by Williams very, very cleanly, I would say. This is good, though. This is what Sahoda needs. He needs to rack up as much as he can, but an armbar attempt here from James Williams might spoil that party. Sahoda's going to stack in this position and slowly edge the elbow out. If he stands, he's going to hyperextend his own arm, manage to slip it out. Got to pass the legs here. Got to fire the hips towards his opponent to pass the guard. Williams looking like he's going to try and maybe hold on to reset this back to the feet. He was looking up. Of course, the ref just behind him, more or less in north-south position. Yes, I heard it there with some words for Williams. That's his style, you know, exciting. He draws his opponent into a gunfight. He also he attacks the psychology, not just the physicality of his opponents. This is one of those, if we see the next 45 seconds run, I'd love to see a five-rounder. That would answer the question, really, does Williams have the cardio to keep up with Sahoda if it was a five-rounder? Agreed. Knees here from Sahoda. Williams, combat base, chooses to stand up. 30 seconds away from the finish line. Will it be Williams? Will it be Sahoda? Sahoda doing a good job of fighting that rear leg. Exposes the back here. Counter throw from Williams. It's a scramble. Hit on the single. And both men embrace after a frenetic 15 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, after three championship rounds, we head to your judges' scorecards. All three judges score the bout 29-28 with your winner by unanimous decision. And the new Cage Steel British Bantamweight Champion in the right corner, Pad Singh Sahu! And there you have it, Pav Sahoda, 29-28 unanimously. It came down to a very close third round in the end. We had it tied up going into the third. The judges see it unanimously, two rounds to one for that man, Pav Sahoda.